What is up guys, so this is going to be a review for The Batman, which stars Robert Pattinson as the titular hero, The Batman, aka Bruce Wayne, Zoe Kravitz as Catwoman, Paul Dano as the Riddler, Jeffrey Wright as Jim Gordon, Andy Serkis as Alfred Pennyworth, and Colin Farrow as the Penguin. And this movie was directed by and written by Matt Reeves, who you may know as the director for the Planet of the Apes movies. And this movie has its fair share of beginnings, so originally this was supposed to be Ben Affleck's Batman movie, where he was set to direct, write, produce, and star in the movie, and was originally going to have Deathstroke, the character of Slade Wilson, as the villain of the Batfleck film. So how do we get here? Well, due to reservations with Ben Affleck, you know, given his personal life, and, you know, the drama and the mess, and the uh, things that were going on behind Warner Brothers at the time, especially after Batman v Superman and the Justice League, and him kind of losing passion for the role after that, he stepped down on the role of director and writer, and eventually stepped down as Batman and producer altogether, and so Matt Reeves stepped in, and the Batman, and this time, it therefore, because this film does not take place within the main DCEU continuity, it's now outside of that, and the rest was history. So this movie stars a much younger version of Bruce Wayne as Batman during his first to second year as being a hero in Gotham. And on the way he meets Catwoman who acts as sort of like a sort of like a love interest and foil at the same time while he's trying to solve crime in Gotham by the Riddler. So obviously given this film's history I was obviously pretty nervous and concerned with how they were gonna pull it off but thankfully they did it. And it's just a great film overall. It is just amazing, brilliant, and epic overall. And I think the true standout for me for this movie is the acting. You know, I, I know that there were there must have been people that were like really scared of how, you know, because Batman is such an iconic character that whoever picks up the mantle, picks up the role, people have high expectations. And therefore I wasn't surprised when people were, were really wondering how Robert Pattinson was going to take this version, his version of Batman to the next level or where exactly he was going to take it. I think Robert Pattinson knocks it out of the park. He kind of brings out this younger version of Bruce Wayne that's really full of darkness and nothing and because of how so much crime there is in Gotham, how much is taken a toll on him and we get to see that but um, I'll delve into that to later in a bit. But yeah, I think Robert Pat we can now move away from him just being Edward Cullen from Twilight or Cedric Diggory from Harry Potter. Yes, he's our new Batman, for at least on for this franchise. And yeah, I think he performs a really great Bruce Wayne and Batman at the same time. And I really can't wait to see what he has in store for, you know, other sequels or spin-offs. Another standout for me is Catwoman. You know, I was uh at first I'll admit I was a bit confused with um her casting as Catwoman, but you know, after the scene in the film. I was actually pleasantly surprised with her performance as Selena Kyle slash Catwoman. I think she also knocks it out of the park and she has this like sly performance to her which you kind of expect for like the character of Catwoman and her chemistry with Robert Pattinson's Batman is just yeah beyond me so yeah props to Zoe Kravitz for pulling that off. And they finally gave her the Selena Kyle haircut from the comics which I highly respect. Paul Dano's Riddler is so Paul Dano. <laughs> I think Paul Dano really has a talent of bringing out, playing these really psychologically complex characters, and he's able to bring this kind of complexity, psychological complexity to the Riddler as well, especially during um, Batman's interrogation scene with the Riddler. I've been trying to reach you. Find the gun! Although I am a bit disappointed that he. Um, at the end, never went into his like full Riddler costume, which, if you know from like either reading comics or you know playing the Batman games, you know that he has kind of like a green suit, a green bowler hat, and a cane. Well, to be honest, I wasn't really expecting a cane because honestly, nowadays it would just look kind of silly. But at least like a full green suit, like as his final costume, because for the majority of the movie, he's in this kind of like green raincoat jacket like a green raincoat hood over him with like glasses on t glasses on his eyes and yeah that was all we got I was expecting his full green suit to be like um his final costume at the end but we didn't really get that so I was kind of disappointed but I think the highlight for me in terms of acting is Colin Farrell as Oswald Cobblepot aka Penguin 
I think you can really tell that he had so much fun in this role. I got you! I got you! And because of how well the makeup and prosthetics were done on his face and like his body, you really can't tell whether it's Colin Farrell or not. And yeah, for me, I think he he's probably has the best performance for me because um he is the penguin that I know from the games, comic books, and from other media. This is probably the most definitive version of Penguin I've seen on screen. I, I, I'm sorry to those who are big fans of the Danny DeVito version from Batman Returns, from Tim Burns version, um, but I think this is the best modern take of Penguin I've seen. Go, take it easy, sweetheart. Hear everything they say, ain't you? And just whoever did the makeup and hairstyling and um, prosthetics for Penguin in this movie really deserves, deserves a raise because it's just so good. <laughs> I also think this is the most, the prettiest, or like the, the most beautiful, beautifully shot Batman film. Because, um, yeah, just the whole look of Gotham and how it was shot overall, it's just like really beautiful. And, you know, it for the first time, I feel it's a Batman film that truly feels like it's in Gotham. You know, combining with, you know, the orange, the orange, dark gray, black pal color palette, you know, it, it really gives off this, um, really makes Gotham, Gotham. And because, you know, with previous Batman uh, films, well, besides the Tim Burton ones, it kind of feels like, it, it says it takes place in Gotham, but it kind of feels like it's like in New York City or New Jersey or something. And it's, and especially where how some scenes would take place in the day. Well, there's nothing wrong with day scenes in Gotham. But in previous Batman films, you can tell that it's just somewhere in the States that you're familiar with. But this one, it, it literally looks as though it's like in a whole different setting, whole different city that you're not familiar with. And it really takes us through what Gotham is and, um, you know, the darkness of it, the amount of crime that it has. And um, yeah, I just, I don't know, for me, for the first time, it just feels so like Gotham. And the, the way it was shot just helps, helps a lot with that. The music in this movie, though, my god, it is really good it's so good you guys like michael giacchino i don't know what it is about him the dude is so talented like you know, going from incredibles to spider-man and doctor strange in the mcu and now this he's able to create such i don't know really great themes that um not well i shouldn't say thematic but then are you can recognize you can you are familiar with and uh, they're not just like one-off themes that are just for like one movie um, there are themes that they play throughout, you know, throughout the entire franchise, and I'm assuming that this B Batman theme that he created will be played for, like, the other sequels and spin-offs. And, yeah, it's just really, really good. It brings out the ma majesty of the Batman, and the kind of mystery of Gotham as well. Yeah, Michael Giacchino, the music behind this film, it's just really good. say as well that I also really like the action sequences in this movie you know the action feels so grounded and real that I'm, 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 comp I'm combined with all the sound the, the sound in this movie that sound just just so crisp and well mixed that it just sounds so real and so grounded and I feel like that we've been kind of missing that from a lot of these Batman movies in a long time Like it's not over t over the top or with like involves like big budget or like has epic music surrounding it or anything. It's just plain simple, and I think that's really all you need for the character of Batman because like he doesn't have any superpowers, and obviously, and he, he relies on his basically his his physical strength most of the time. Well, not most of the time. He has gadgets as well, but when he's like hand to hand combat, really that's all you <laughs> that's all you need for demonstrating the power that Batman has and physical strength, and I feel like this film nailed it. I'm vengeance. Matt Reeves' direction for this movie, it's a different direction or take on the character of Batman and this whole world and setting of Gotham this time around. 
that he makes things so epic and grand, but at the same time, they're just like the simplest kinds of things where either he's just flying small distances or, you know, he's fighting physical hand-to-hand -hand combat. And just... <laughs> or like the car chase sequence. It, it, all, it all feels like very simple things, but yet yeah, they feel so epic. And he made this entire movie pretty much stretch out the whole way through, uh, basically a crime story where it involves like crime after crime after crime after crime after crime throughout the entire movie until he finally finds the Riddler and stops his plans. Like there's not really any big subplot or anything involved in between. It's just like basically Batman trying to solve each crime all the way through until he gets the Riddler, which it's kind of like in the Arkham games where you're basically set up with this villain and you basically have to solve the mystery all the way, all the way through to the end. Yeah, it's basically that. It's very, very, very straightforward in this movie. Which, getting back to the runtime, yeah, the, it's basically, when I say stretch through, yeah, I mean it literally stretches through the, the almost three hour runtime, which I feel like this movie could have been cut, could have cut down the, sh the runtime a little bit. Cause, yeah, it's basically like a, he's Batman working together with Jim Gordon, solving this mystery. Yeah, that basically takes out, takes throughout that entire time length of the movie. And there were definitely scenes where I feel like that it could have been cut and could, could just go, you know, uh, on to move on to the next point already. Which I think some of the scenes have been dragged out, and that's why I think the runtime could have been cut a bit shorter. And I think the movie would have been much more perfect that way. There were also a few ideas that I felt that were basically or, or thrown, I shouldn't say thrown, but were kind of like suggested or implied in a way throughout this entire movie that I felt that times weren't really as developed for me personally. Like, this movie is supposed to also uh, dive deeper into the psychology of Bruce Wayne being this crime fighter in the these, these chaotic streets of Gotham. And honestly, I feel like this movie didn't really delve too much on it. It mainly focused on him being in the Batman suit, which he actually is in throughout the majority of the movie, which I think it's definitely something that a lot of Batman movies don't do which is they have that Bruce Wayne be in the suit throughout most of the movie. I think he was in the suit for like 80% of the movie, or 90% of the movie actually. It's basically, yeah, for most of the runtime of the movie. But I do love the practicality. I do love how practical Batman slash Robert Pattinson's suit is in this one. Uh, I hope that we get to see more upgrades of the suit as we go along through this film, new film series of Batman films. But going back into diving deeper into Bruce Wayne's, uh, you know, kind of mental state throughout the movie, it's... Yeah, it's, it, let's just say that it's implied that he is in a dark place. And since because he's in a suit most of the time, I feel like this movie, that, this is an idea that was kind of suggested or kind of they wanted to explore, but they were so focused on, you know, Batman solving crime in Gotham City that they didn't really get so much time to kind of dive deeper into Bruce Wayne's kind of psychology, psychologic mental state. If this continues, it won't be long before you've nothing left. I don't care what happens to me. It's only gonna get worse for you. Cause um, yeah, fighting crime in Gotham, in one of the darkest cities in the world, it's gotta take a toll on you. And we do kind of see that. There are some scenes where we get to see that, but I just wish that this movie dived d delved deeper into that more. Cause like I said, with him just solving crime within Gotham, this overstretched crime that I feel like it could have been cut down for scenes like you know seeing Bruce Wayne as a character as well, not just Batman, not just Robert Pattinson slash Bruce Wayne in the suit, then yeah, I think it would have been more effective and it could have um, made more use of the runtime that way. There were also two things that kind of um, disappointed me as well. Um, well, the ri seeing, not seeing the Riddler in his like full green suit, um, although him in the, the blue green jacket, uh, raincoat jacket, it works for the film obviously. But the other thing that I really I actually wanted to see, and I think it's contrary to a lot of Batman fans, is that I actually wanted to see Batman have a kill this time around. You know, if there was one film where we get to see a dark, much darker Batman, it would be this one. And I feel like this movie would have been, would have been the perfect time to see Batman kill someone and kind of go through the ram ramifications and the consequences of that. But... Yeah, um, in this movie, Batman doesn't kill, unfortunately. 
um, which I really thought they would because the trailers kind of seemed to give me that vibe. But yeah, I, I don't know. That's just one thing that I really wanted to happen, actually. Um, but it didn't happen. So that was one thing, I was, another thing that I was kind of disappointed by. But overall, like I said from the very beginning, this is a beautiful, beautifully made Batman movie. And for the first time, it actually feels like it takes actually takes place in the city of Gotham. Like you see from the comic books and or the Arkham games. A lot of performances from the cast to remember by. And hopefully down the line, as we get more sequels and spin-offs, they'll become more iconic. It's the most grounded Batman films I've seen since the Dark Knight trilogy. And even though it's not 100% of what I was looking for or expecting with this film, and even though I personally really do think that the runtime could have been cut just a bit shorter, yeah, I just, I'm still hyped and excited and am anticipating for any future installments within this new Batman franchise that exists out of the main DC EU continuity and more spin-offs and sequels from this franchise of Batman films. I'm gonna give the Batman an 8 out of 10 and an A minus. But at the same time though, to think that this is how we got here, like, if Batfleck, if the Batfleck, Batfleck film wasn't cancelled, if Ben Affleck's film wasn't cancelled, then we wouldn't have got this film. So, I, I, it is curious to imagine, you know, what would happen if the Batfleck film did happen, and, you know, what kind of film, you know, what it would actually aesthetically and visually look like in that Batfleck film, you know, ba Ben Affleck's Batman versus Joe Mag. Manganiello's Deathstroke. I mean, what would that look like? I mean, I don't know. I guess we'll never know now that we have this new Batman film franchise. But yeah, I guess we can only imagine our own dreams and I guess <laughs> our own fan fix or fan concept arts of, you know, what it may look like. But yeah, I guess we'll never know. But guys, that has been my review for the Batman. I forgot to mention at the very beginning of this video that there will be some spoilers in the video, so um, if you went into this video thinking that there will be no spoilers, I really do apologize. I, I, I probably put like a spoiler um, alert on the very beginning of this, of this video anyways. But yeah, so hopefully you guys enjoyed it, and if you like this, leave a like because it happens all the time. But my question for you guys is, have you seen the Batman? Have you even heard of it? And if you have seen it, then what do you think of it? Where, did you rank it? Where would you rank it in terms of what your list of... Batman films are if you have seen the, the other Batman films and let me know in the comments below as well who you who your favorite Batman actor is right now and where you would rank Robert Pattinson in terms of the rest of the Batman actors that we've had so far on the big screen so anyways that's gonna do thank you so much for watching hope you guys enjoyed it and uh, as always I'll see you guys in the next one and remember to subscribe as well <laughs> forgot to mention that the first time but anyways Rhinos roll out and take care